we are on the fish in Norway. And we've got a beautiful plump codlin. I had to run back down the hill so I'm a bit out of breath. But there we go. I'll get this chap unhooked and chuck him back. The other one's gone bloody slack as well. There we go. <sighs> Hectic. So welcome to day four, everyone. We've arrived at our mark. I've already got my two competition blackouts cast out. One loaded with herring, one loaded with rag. So same tactics as yesterday, which seemed to work all right in the evening after dark, but we're gonna try them in the day as well. Uh, based on the results so far, the herring is definitely outfishing the rag. So if that carries on today being the pattern, then I might switch over to just herring baits after taking stock of how much bait we've got with us. But hopefully we've got plenty. Still plenty more herring left in the freezer for the rest of our trip as well, so that's fantastic. But yeah, so we just keep on looking for bites. I've got the herring out on a pulley rig, and I've got the rag out on my up and over, both five foot snoods on those. And I've got a spare rig down there baited up, ready to go, all with the six ounce grip leads on. So fingers crossed today brings us plenty of fish. And you never know, there might even be something other than a cod caught on camera. The conditions look pretty good for halibut, according to Wayne, who's a much more expert in these things than me, because I've never had one. Though if we do catch one today, it'll be going straight back because it's the close season. They're protected until the end of March. So great stuff. And look, I am not wearing a coat. The sun has come out. It is glorious. And that bitter, bitterly cold wind that we've been standing in has died off. It's a beautiful, calm day. The sea is pristine. Wayne's just chucked a shad out because the conditions look pretty good for trying that today as well. So maybe I'll have a go at that a bit later on. But yeah, we are definitely in with a chance of some good fishing. And if the weather stays like this and the skies are clear, we might even get another spectacular display from the Aurora Borealis. And the guys are just tucking into some crisps. I thought we could take a look at the view. They seem to like paprika crisps here in Norway and they are absolutely delicious. Look at the scenery. We are so lucky to be over here fishing. Couldn't ask for much more, except maybe for a bite. Glorious. Well, We've all been getting a few little tiny taps on the rag baits. So I'm just going to reel my rag baits in now and see if anything's attacked it. But we think it might be some dabs out there. So I've just got a 1-0, uh, sorry, start that again. I've just got a loop rig set up, 18 inch snoods, 1-0 hooks on, that I've loaded with some king rag. I'm going to chuck that out, see if we can bring in a flatty. So it'd be nice to see another species. Let's see if anything's attacked these rag. I always remember to tighten the drag before I start reading in. This water is crystal clear. It's extremely deep though, so you can't actually see the bottom very far out at all. Oh, we've got the leader on the reel. Oh, I'm over you. Right, that's it. Thank you, Lee. So, yeah, it doesn't actually look that attacked. One wane just reeled in. Definitely had something munching on it. So I'll get this one unclipped. And we'll send out the loop rig. So here we have the loop rig all set up. See that on the camera there. And that's got 1-0 saltwater super match. The Farivaz hook's on there loaded and ready to go. Nice strong hook, just in case a bigger fish does come through. Because we don't want to be having the hook straighten out should something decent decide they want to eat these little tiny ragworms. So let's get these bad boys launched.
There we go. All out to sea. Now I've just got to wait for that lead to hit the bottom. It's so deep here, you have to let quite a bit of line out before it hits the deck. And because we've got no wind today, I know all this line that's being pulled off now is just that weight sinking. It's still going. Still going. A little bit more. And there we have it. Just got to the bottom. Now it's going to take quite a long time for my line to sink as well and keep up with that. So I'm just going to have to stand by my rod for a minute or two, making sure my line doesn't get caught on these rocks here in front of me and stays in contact with the lead. And not forgetting, even though I've got small baits out there, to set the drag on that reel because there's always a chance of a monster. Well, I just had a lovely pull down on the herring. I've got a bit of footage of me running it in, but I think my mics weren't working. So you might be getting that with a bit of music over it. But here we have another lovely little codlin. Hopefully this one I'll unhook all right. I'll try and put it back because I've already kept a few for the freezer and this isn't the biggest fish in the world, but it's a good start. That was my first cast on the herring on the up and over rig. Fabulous. Well, all I've done since I haven't put that cob back is get my rig rebaited and I've already got another bite on the herring that I just whacked back out. So let's keep an eye on the left hand rod and see if it pulls right round. Oh, I've got a bite on the right-hand rod as well, on the dab rig. It's all kicking off. <laughs> so what more could you ask? Bites on both rod, cod first chuck, and it isn't freezing cold. And there goes the dab rig again on the right-hand rod. Just waiting for that rod tip on the left to go. Because hopefully there's another cod out there wanting to eat that juicy bit of herring. Oh, dab rod's tapping away again. Little gentle little taps. No sign of anything again on the left hand rod. I'll give that dab bite a little bit longer to develop and then get that reeled in, see if we've got one. If you watched Wayne's videos from September when I came out here with him, you'll see I had some really nice dabs out here then. The biggest one went 39 centimetres. The small ones that I was catching were like the big ones we get back home. So it's all on a different scale out here in Norway. Oh, herring one just twitched again. Oh, there we are. Definitely a good pull down there on the dab rig, so we'll have this one in. Hopefully my herring one won't go nuts while I'm reeling this in. So is there anything on it? Well, it doesn't feel very heavy. No, I think I missed that. But still, we'll get some more bait chaps out, rebait these ragworm, and we'll keep trying for a dab. So even though we had a very definite bite there, look, not clear which hook that fish was going for. Those baits still look good, so I'm just going to top them up with a couple of fresh rag and get these chucked back out. So there we go, all rebaited with some lovely juicy rag, ready to get it chucked back out. So cracking start, I think. Bites, every cast. Yeah, so we're in with a shout. 
So we just had another nice pull down on the herring. It was about 20 minutes ago I last had that little nibble on it. So let's see if this develops into anything. Look, the dab rod's still twitching away there. <laughs> I'll even though cast that back out with fresh rag on. I'm going to leave the dab, dab rig to develop the bites a bit longer, see if we can get a hook up. What we want is that herring to rip off. So it's herring on the left, dab baits on the right. And there goes that herring again, little pull down there. Twitching on the dab rod. I'm much more interested in the herring bait being pulled over there. Dad well, clearly wants me to reel that rod in. <laughs> I'm resisting it. There's two hooks on there. I can catch two dabs if I leave it a bit longer. If that's what they are. Might be a little pin whiting just like back home, you never know. Alright. Let's see if the dab's on there. If it's not hooked, I'm gonna put it back down. Yeah, I think there's something on there. Yeah, there's definitely some weight on this. Might be a big lump of weed, because it feels like a dead weight. Oh, well, I might have, a, it feels like a dead weight. Am I reeling anyone else in? Definitely not just a five ounce lead. Oh, there might have been a little kickback then. Yeah, there's a fish on there. Way! It's a baby dab. <laughs> so there we have it. That's quite a small dab by Norway standards, but we've proved that is what is out there. Now we just need to catch his big brother. I'll get this chap unhooked and chuck him back. It's all action here, more bites. Both rods, I think. Oh yeah, the herring rod I'm gonna go for first. Let's see if it's on it. Yeah. We've got another fish. Nice fish, definitely bigger than that dab. I don't know. It's not edge shaking. And then the other one didn't much until it got near the edge. That doesn't look like a cod. It doesn't feel like a cod. It's not fighting, I can tell you that. It's just heavy. Yeah, I'm filming. Well, I hope I'm filming. This could be a halibut, everyone. Which way is my other line going? I'm under it. Yeah. This could be a halibut. Did give you any head check for that? Nope. It's keeping deep. Could be a small halibut. See the leader now? Yeah. Oh, it's now it's head shaking, just like the other one. We didn't want to got close to the edge. Still it could be a bat. Still could be a halibut. <laughs> any colour. Now it's fighting for freedom. Yeah, it could be a halibut. Come away from that ledge. Oh, I <laughs> right, I need to go under that rig. I don't need to move. You got it? Thanks, Wayne. Woo! Pretty little thing. Look at that. I nailed that circle hook. You're welcome. So I've just gone for a little walk up the hill to use the facilities and we've got a beautiful plump codlin. I had to run back down the hill so I'm a bit out of breath but there we go. I'll get this chap unhooked and chuck him back. Whew. Whew. We are on the fish in Norway. The other one's gone bloody slack as well. 
Right. I could be on that. Though. Sort that fish out in a sec. I've got to deal with this one now. Tighten the drag. No, I, think, I don't think this is you. Yeah, there's definitely a fish on there before. Yeah. This has got my little 1 0 hooks on it, so I need to be careful with this one. This does not feel like a dab. If it is a dab, I'll be ecstatic. <laughs> that cod would be just fine sitting there waiting. It's not, in, it's not getting burnt like it would be in the summer. This feels bigger than the last one, which worries me with them little hooks. I'll just take it slow. I don't want to force it and have that hook pop out. Lee's ready down the side here to do the honours. I'll try and bring it closer. Still a way out. Yeah, I did chuck this one a bit. <laughs> yeah, I've got two hooks on here. Yeah, I did get a dab bite earlier on this one. Yeah, it's banging its head now. I've got the leader. There it comes, I can see it. That is a fat cod. Thanks, Lee. Mind your other self on the other hook. Oh. So there we go. That was on my loop rig send out for the dabs. So just uh, two ragworm on that and a 1 0 hook. We'll get this chap unhooked and then we'll take a look at both of them before we chuck them back. So there we have our two. Norwegian codlin. Oh, let's we'll get a better grip of that one. There we go. <sighs> Hectic. The lads need to catch up. Oh, <sighs> dab rig on one with one cod, herring rig for the other. So sadly, one of those cod is going to have to stay. It was gut hooked, but the other one, I've just chucked it back, and it swam off really strongly. So I'm very happy with that. I've got no baits out in the water, so I'm going to get myself sorted out, take my time to get some baits chucked out and sort out my dab rig, because um, that cod made a bit of a mess of it. So yeah, good start to the day. So I've just had a bite on my dab rig, that's the right hand rod, the one with the loop rig, 18 inch snoods, 1-0 hooks. I just had to replace one of them 1-0 hooks, because it come off when I hooked that cod. So I've got a bit of a stronger hook on the bottom now, a big chinu. It's still a size 1 -oh, but definitely a stronger hook in case we pick up another cod. There he goes, tap tap. Just let it take that hook down a little bit. Looks like it's moved away, it's got a bit of slack line. Let's see if there's anything on the end. Yeah, I think we might have something small on here. Oh, maybe not so small. I think I've got another cod on my dab rig. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that is a bigger dab, which would be really nice. Double dab would be nice too. Yeah, whatever it is, it's not as big as them other things I was catching. It's a bit of weight there though. Certainly putting a nice bend in the rod. Now, this one does have a glass tip, so it's not as stiff as Wayne's naggers. What have we got? Here it comes. It's a spinning dab. A better size one as well. If you can clip the rig, 
Lee. Still not massive dab, we'll have a look at it in a minute in front of the camera. Pop that rod down safely. Let's bring this dab up. There we go. Beautiful Norwegian dab. So bigger than the first, but still not a monster that we know can be thrown up here. I'll get this chap unhooked and chuck him back. So this should give you an idea of how deep the water is where we're fishing. You can see the angle that is going down. Let's just angle the camera down a bit as well. Move forwards. Bear with me. That is super deep. Well, the weather has improved. The sea is like a mill pond. I haven't got my external mics on, so hopefully this sounds all right. They're just charging up, ready for this evening. But look what we got. A Norwegian burger and chips from the local takeaway. So we're gonna enjoy our food. Uh, the tide's dropping out, so it's gone a bit quiet on the fishing side. So it's perfect time for us to rejuvenate, get some energy inside us and enjoy a bit of grub. But look at this. By far the best weather we've had in Norway. Absolutely stunning. Well, I've just finished that burger and I've got a bite on my dad brig. So let's take a look, see what we got. Line's gone a bit slack. I'll just lift into it, see if it's on there. If it's not, I'll pop the red back down and give the bite a bit more time to develop. Oh yeah, we got something on here. Hopefully another little dab. Oh, it's woken up. It's near the edge. Oh, I can see the leader. Let's see what fish we have. What do we have? Oh yes, another dab. There we go. A lovely Norwegian flatty. Nicely hooked, so this one should go back fine. I'll get that sorted out and chuck back. Woohoo! So I've got another bite on my dab rig. That's the right hand rod. Line's just gone slack. Let's pick it up and see if there's anything on there. Just tighten down a little bit into it. Just give it a little bit more time to develop. You know, it's actually warm out here now. I've still got a lot of clothes on, but that sun is just glorious and there's no wind now. I make the most of this for the next few hours because we know when it gets dark, it's going to be freezing. All right, let's just lift into this. I'll see if this dab's on it. Like. Nothing there. So we'll just put this back down. Hopefully the fish is still near the bait. And I'll come back in a minute. I'll bring you back if the dab's still there. So my bait with the herring, my bait with the herring? <laughs> my rod with the herring. Just had a pull down, gone a bit slack, so we're going to have a little look. See if there's anything on here. It was only a very gentle little pull down. I'm just going to tighten that line up a little bit. I'm going to keep an eye on this. See if it leads to anything. Well, no sign of anything, but there could be something there. Just sitting around, waiting to take it. So I'll keep watching, and if there's any action, you'll be the first to see. Well, I've got a bit of slack line on my dab rod now. It's all action. The bite on the herring didn't come back, but let's see if we got the dab this time. Get that 
drag nice and tight. Still don't feel like he's on there. Nope, pop that back down. Still a chance it's going to come back like it did just now. After the first time I popped it back. Listen the drag back off. Not that much. Have a click. And while I'm here I'll just tighten up my herring rig a little bit more. Look, the dab's still there, look, having a right tug on that. Just give that a little bit longer. Just raise my rod tip up there. That's a little bit near, line's a little bit near those rocks. As I said earlier, it's very deep here. You can see my line's going down like that angle. But I must have cast that out a good 80 yards. Yep, dab is still there. Yeah. Yeah, got him this time. This one feels pretty small. Having a little kickback now, he's near the edge. Oh, oh, I don't know, is it a dab? Is it a dab or is it something different? It is something different. What do we have here? We have a haddock. Let's have a closer look at this one. I've got a fish. Got a haddock. Yeah, there we go. Look, only a little tiny one, but that is another species. Let's get this chap unhooked and chuck him back, and hopefully he'll come back when it's about five times as big. There we go. <laughs> so I've got some fresh bait to chuck out that is a nice juicy lump of herring So this is the bait I just reeled in. Look at that. Something's had a go, right go at that. Smashed into it. I did notice a little pluck on that rod, but maybe I missed a decent pull down. So I'll get this rebaited, ready to chuck out next time. Well, the sun is setting and it's been a bit quiet since we had our mid-afternoon lunch. Just a couple of little bites, uh, no fish to speak of. But we're entering the witching hour and we're expecting maybe around 10 o'clock tonight the bites to kick off because when the tide comes back in it's around low tide now and we have a stunning view let me just twist you around a little bit so you can see where the sun set look at that beautiful we've been really lucky today here with the weather we've actually not had to wear all of our layers and it even got quite warm at one point, but we're going to pay the price for that because the temperature is going to drop right off now that sun's gone down. Thankfully, we've lost the wind um, that we had the last few days and today has been just stunningly beautiful. And hopefully we can follow that up with some beautiful fish tonight. Wish us luck. We keep those fingers crossed. Well, I was literally just talking to you about the sunset and the weather and how it was going to get cold. And I've just had a pull down on the herring. So I've got both rods out with herring now. I've put the scratching rig away because after dark, what we want is big fish. So let's see if this bite develops into anything. So that was on the right hand rod. So let's see if we can get a fish on that right hand rod. Well, the pull down I had on the right hand rod never came back, but I've just had another one on the left hand rod and the beautiful pink sky to set the scene. Let's see if we can turn this one into a fish. That sunset is just stunning. Yeah. It's get better, it? it is, it's getting better. Oh, 
come on, fish. One little taste of my herring and you don't want to eat any more. I don't know, you'd think it would want its tea, wouldn't you? It is dinner time. Is it just one little pull down? Yeah. That's what the other one did just now, one little pull down then went away. Well, it seems to have gone away. So I'll turn the camera off and get myself a bit more ready for when it gets dark. Gotta get my headlamp out, get a light on the camera so that if any action happens, we can get it all lit up and you can see what's going on. Um, but yeah, so anyway, at least a couple of bites, that's a good sign. See you in a bit. Well, what can I say? We thought it would all kick off around sunset and as darkness set in, but tonight it just hasn't happened. We've been trying hard, chucking out baits. There's three of us fishing, two rods each, and it's just been completely dead. Um, so yeah, we're gonna start packing up soon probably, unless something happens in the next five or 10 minutes. And we'll be heading out again tomorrow for day five in Norway. So thanks for watching. See you tomorrow. Bye guys.